Greetings and God bless you in the wonderful name of our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Robert Hagan, and uh, we're going to do today's, we're going to get into God's word. We're talking about the the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, Jesus as a man of action. When you think of Jesus Christ, if you've been a believer for any length of time, you know that he was a man of action from the time of his uh, birth and uh, growing up as a young man until the time that his ministry started at 30 until the very day that he was crucified and buried. And then God got him up from the dead and he was uh, appeared to many after that and then was ascended upon high where he seated at the right hand of the father as we speak right now. And, um, the reason he came is because we needed redemption. Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, and there was a tainted bloodline. And uh, through all history, the time was leading up to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We talked about that the last time we got together. But today I want to go into Mark, the uh, first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to start in verse 13. And we're we're just going to read a little bit of Mark because it's, it's, it's pretty pretty amazing book. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days. This is, he, you know, the spirit drove him into the wilderness, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. That was at the end of the 40 days of temptation of Satan. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. See, things haven't changed over the years. It's still a matter of repenting and believing the gospel. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, come ye after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in, in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. There's time involved here. You know, Mark is very, he just gets right to the point, but you know, there was a little bit of time. They had to tell their dad, hey, you know, we're, we're going with Jesus. They, they just didn't, in the Eastern culture, you just didn't take off on your father. I mean, it was something that, you know, that I believe his father said, sons, you do this because this is your calling. You know, you have to look at these stories and you have to look at these things as being, you know, these are real men. These guys weren't robots. They, they were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for him. And when they knew that he was there, they went with him. It's just, when you think, and when you think in those terms, it's easier to understand the word of God. Uh, let's see, whereabouts are we here? I think we are in verse 20. And straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee with the ship of the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Okay, Jesus is teaching, okay, one of his ministries. And they were astonished at his doctrine, astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew and James and John. Listen to this. this the man of action, okay, as we're moving along here. But Simon's 
wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. She got up. She, she I'm healed. I'm going to feed you guys some dinner. At, and at even, <clears throat> when the sun set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers or many diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, listen to this here. Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and prayed. Okay. That's a real key right there, is prayer. A key. I mean, it was a, it was a a huge key to the life of the Lord Jesus Christ was prayer. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when he had found them, him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. This is what I really want to focus on right here. This is really neat. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he was cleansed. And the what I want to show you here, you know, the, the word touched right there, it says he put forth his hand and touched him. The word it means to attach oneself to. Um, Jesus, you know, a leper was not the type of person that you were going to go and take to the store with you. When they walked down the street, they had to walk on the other side of the street. And when people were approaching, they had to say, unclean, unclean. That was a part of the tradition. And it was the same with this leper. But this leper wanted to be healed. And he said, Lord, if, if you can do it, you know, make me whole. And he went ahead and did. And it's it's it's. Fantastic when you think about it. He, he went, he started off and he just he's just moving right along there. And he said in verse 44, he said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much to blaze the matter abroad, abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. So he told this guy not to go and make a, you know, not to go to the local newspaper and tell him, hey, I was a leper, you know, all the leprosy has gone now. And it was Jesus that did it, you know, and then all of a sudden everybody in the world is, is trying to get to Jesus. A point in there, too, when he talks back in, in verse 15, when, he's, when Jesus says the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. It's pretty much the same thing that we're dealing with today. You know, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Um, there's a change that will take place as you change lords. You know, you've been a Lord of your life. If you if you are not a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you change lordships, you make him Lord, the master. You know, you do your best to walk according to the dictates of what the word of God teaches. And right now we're going to go to Luke chapter five. All right. In Luke chapter five, I want to show you something in this record as we read along through here. This is kind of neat, too. We're going to start in Luke chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Oh, that's interesting. How would, how would you like that for you? The people press upon you to hear the word of God. 
he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Interesting sidelight to this, a side note, or sidebar if you want to call it, is that if sound travels, I mean, he was out a little ways and he could speak and the sound travels really far when you're when you're speaking over water. It's kind of neat. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, verse 4, launch out into the deep, and listen to this right here. Let down your nets, plural, for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Wait a minute. Whoa. Wait a minute. What did Jesus say? He said, let down your nets. Okay. It was not hit the word of the Lord to let down a net. So what happens? And when they had done, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships, so they began to sink. There was a lot of fish. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fishes, which had been taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners of Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass, when in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who be, seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. I, this may be the same record, just Luke's point of view on it. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And it talks about how the how his fame spread abroad. And, and you know, it's just amazing. And he was a man of action. He continued to move. And he was doing the Father's will. As you read through the Gospels, we're not going to read through all the Gospels, but as you read through the Gospels, you see a lot of records. In, in um, I believe John chapter 9 is the record of the man born blind. That it was proof that uh, Jesus was the Messiah because the man was born blind. And no one had ever been healed of blindness from birth. It, would, it was a sign that he was the Messiah. Um, Sure, he changed water into wine, but he his ministry it entailed teaching, and it entailed uh, healing. And it was like the the gift ministries in Ephesians chapter four: apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. As we get more into this series of, of teachings, we're going to talk a little bit more next time about the uh, ministries of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. But you see the uh, teaching part of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he taught the word of God. People pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Um, he was a pastor. He knew how to deal with people. Uh, obviously, evangelist, somebody who their very presence would draw people's attention. An apostle, obviously, and a prophet, and, and it was all rolled into the Lord Jesus Christ. And the neatest thing about it, folks, is that his ministry is continuing to this very day. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he makes intercession for us daily according to the will of God. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. You know, to that song, you know, why don't you look up and give Christ a chance. Uh, that I was listening to that song today, uh, Touch of the Master's Hand. You know, many a life uh, tarnished and bruised with sin. You know, the Lord comes in and he, tight, he tightens of broken strings. He's, he's a healer of broken hearts. You know, if you ever think that you've gotten down to the point where 
you're too far gone for God to forgive you or, or for the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and make your life worthwhile. Don't ever think that because as we can all testify, and uh, I know uh, Greg will say too, that you know our lives change for the better when we change lords and uh, i don't take light of it it's it's been a lot of years for me and one of the things i've learned is that we're we're not always going to be faithful to the lord but you know what he's always faithful to us Um, every day that you get up and when you take a breath you ought to be thanking god for another day of life I know it's sometimes it's hard, especially the way things are going in our country and our world. But as long as there's breath within us, we we should be out there and we should be praising God. And uh, we have the opportunity to share the word with people to get them to come back to the Lord. That's that's something. If you can reach one person, you've done you've done quite a bit of good. Let's go to John chapter 14. This might be a little shorter today. <clears throat> John chapter 14. We're going to start in verse 12. I love the first part of this chapter. Let's let's just read the first part too. It's, it's too good to pass up. Let not your heart be troubled. You know this it's a good. This is a good lesson for this day and time too. Let not your heart be troubled, folks. Be, you believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye Maybe also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Then Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, there's so many different ways to get to the Father, you know, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. You just, as long as you're a good person, and no, he didn't say that. He said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And as I've said before many times, either he told the truth or he lied. And if he lied, there's no sense in it, even bothering with it. But if he told the truth, which I believe he did, we have everything to gain. If he had known me in verse seven, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father. It suffices us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show me the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now listen to this verse, folks. I didn't write this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That can't be true. He that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask of my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything of my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And here we go. And I will pray the Father. And he will, shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But ye know him, for he dwells in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. <clears throat> this is talking about future. The Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. He's talking about another comforter. He was going to send the gift of the Holy Spirit to be in the believers. He is, it talks in Colossians 127, as Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're spiritual beings. We, you know, we have physical bodies, but we're our our identity, our nature is sons and daughters of the one true and living God. This is pretty this is pretty amazing stuff. It's it sounds almost like revolutionary, doesn't it? It sounds like, oh, that that's just too far out. It Hagen, you you you're getting a little new agey for me. No, this isn't new age. This is the Lord Jesus Christ saying, 
that the works I do, ye shall do also. What works did Jesus Christ do? Well, he taught the word of God, which is something I have the privilege of doing right now. He ministered healing to people with saying to him, you know, be thou healed. And even his touch healed people. He had compassion on people. He had compassion on the leper. And he reached out to him. He was always giving. I mean, you go through the Gospels and. He, you know, he talked about him and everybody has a place to rest, but the son of man, you know, he, everybody was always demanding his time constantly. And he was healing people, many people in the gospels, but it always seemed like the Sadducees and the Pharisees were around. Do you notice that? And why were they around? If you look at John chapter eight, after the man that was born blind was healed, they tried to you know, they, they tried to condemn Jesus for that. If that was my brother, say my brother Paul, and he had been healed and he had never seen, you bet you I would have been out there telling everybody about Jesus Christ. You think I would have been worried about the Sadducees and the Pharisees? But see, in that day and time, they would put you out of the temple. You know, you would be pretty much ostracized from the society. If you didn't do things according to what they taught and to what the dictates that they were putting out were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But, you know, Jesus was, you know, they were saying that he, you know, he can't be of God. He's doing these things on the Sabbath day. But what did it say earlier that I do the, the I do the works of the father? The father's the one that does the works, but I'm the one that he's, he's saying, Jesus, do this. You know, this guy's blind, heal him. This leper over here needs a touch. And I guarantee you that if he'd been born with leprosy, no one had ever touched him. You just don't go around touching lepers. A friend of my mom's years ago over in Belgium and Europe was a doctor who was uh, one of the famous doctors. He used to go to Africa and uh, serve the uh, folks down there that had leprosy. And... It's an awful thing, leprosy, it really is. Just to be able to go and, you know, it's very contagious. You just don't go walking up and touching somebody like that, unless you're the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I'm thinking, too, is, uh, as we're going along here, isn't comfort something that we need? And... I don't know, just from my heart I'm speaking, I just know that before I got an opportunity to become a believer and a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, when I had been dealing with Buddhism and, and some of the Eastern thoughts, which are very interesting, you know, and I'm not bashing Buddhists because, you know, I, I know people that are Buddhists. Um, there's truth in it, but it's not. It's not the truth that we need. The truth that we need is the complete truth. Uh, the word of God says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And it also talks about how God who cannot lie. And I really believe that the Bible, the word of God, is a handbook for us. And it, it takes probably a lifetime to really start to understand some of the great truths in here. I think the principles in the Bible, um, you know, living a moral life, being fair to your fellow man, um, you know, not cheating or stealing, doing things like that. Just, just having integrity is something that is, you look at, I have a problem with politics right now. I'm sorry. I, I used to like to watch a lot of political things, but I just, it just seems like the same circle going over and over again. And we really have to realize that whoever's in charge, you know, and uh, my, my friend Paul up in Massachusetts said, sent me a, a text the other day and said, you know, Bob, God's in charge. And I said, yeah, you're right. A lot of things are happening behind the scenes, but God overall knows what's going to happen. 
Um, I'm thankful that we have this forum to be able to share the word of God. I really um, going to pray that that God makes sense of all what I shared today because there was just a lot of things that were. Uh, there's so much to talk about when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, but I just wanted to show a little bit, and I think mainly it was his compassion today that he was willing to go out and, uh, if you will, take chances. Would you, if he had told me, if I'd been an early follower of his, I want you to go over and I want you to touch this leper and minister healing to him, I probably would have gone, well, you know, am I going to get leprosy? Or what did they do? You know, after a while, the Lord sent them out sent out 70 and they came back and he said, even the devils are subject to their name. But it's just, um, it's not just using the name. It's being a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and being able to, to uh, reach out to people. That's one of the, one of the things that we try to do on the uptime uh, church program on Sunday afternoons. Um, not we're not trying to build up a mega church by any stretch of imagination. It's a fellowship of of like-minded believers, as Greg says. It's um, we're getting together and we're sharing the word. If there's some insight that the Lord has uh, put on our hearts on on different subjects, like uh, Johnny or you know Bob or Vanessa, and myself or Leora or Greg, it's you know it's not that we're so wise. It's just that we're doing this to. Maybe we can reach out and reach one person out there that might be seeking. And uh, if you are, um, you should, as I've said many times, you know, should pray, uh, God, if you're really there, show me, you know, I really want to be part of your family. And I really uh, want to learn more about Jesus Christ and just start off by reading the gospels and show, ask him to show you. And I'll tell you one thing. Those, those that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness shall be filled. And uh, I'm going to share one more scripture. Psalm 1, 138, verse 2. This just came to mind. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. He's magnified his word. This word is not something that to be taken lightly, folks. This is God's word. It, it's a, I don't know how other people feel. I feel just, you know, God just opened doors for me to share it. I, I, I love to teach the word. Uh, but we're to praise him for his loving kindness and for his truth with our whole hearts, soul, mind, and strength. If we just think for a minute what Jesus Christ came and did, you know, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He took all this beating and all this sin on him so that you and I could, could stand before God and he could say someday, you know, welcome thou faithful and good servant. Um, it's just, it's something that, it's like, I look at Jesus Christ as being the great heart surgeon. Because somebody who has a really hard heart that hears the truth of the word, and all of a sudden they start to believe it, and they start their heart starts to get softened, and they start, not that they're wimpy, but they start to realize that there's more to live for than just themselves. You know, and I'm I'm kind of rambling on a little bit right now. I'm going to wrap it up here in a second, but I think it's really important that at this time that people get to the point where they really are at this point. Don't don't wait any longer. You know, reach out to God and the Lord Jesus Christ because you know what they're reaching out to you, and uh, yeah, you won't be disappointed. So I want to go ahead and pray. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is a man of action, still is as we speak. Thank you for uh, the folks that would be watching this. Uh, I lift Greg to you. Thank you for his life and his family. I thank you for uh, our family of believers, wherever they might be. 
I lift them up to you. And I also want to pray for uh, Sister Megan over in the UK, who comes to mind. And uh, all the folks we know, I thank you for the rest of the week and uh, how you bless us so much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.